Hi everyone, this is Nia and today I'll be doodling some leaves. I'm still a bit stumped with work outside of YouTube, so I thought of some simple doodles for you guys today. I'm just going to go right into the first one. The colors that I'm going to use is Olive Green, Crimson Lake, Cobalt Blue, Burnt Umber, and Yellow Ochre. I'm going to start with the yellow ochre and use a very heavy load on my brush to create a background circle. The consistency is fairly light because we're going to be painting leaves on top of this and because the circle is fairly large, I'm just going to dry this with a hair dryer once I'm done so I don't have to wait too long. Once the background is dry, I'm then going to mix the color for the leaves and the stem and for this I used a mix of cobalt blue, crimson lake and burnt umber in quite a thick consistency. I've switched my synthetic brush here so I can create thin lines for the stem since the tip is fairly sharp on my brush but you can also use a smaller brush for this. After that I'm going to paint the leaves using the same color and I'm just going to evenly distribute the leaves on the stem that I painted earlier. I'm just going to paint a few while leaving big gaps in between because I'm still going to add more leaves with different colors after this. And after I'm done with this first color, I'm going to add yellow ochre into the burgundy mix and I'm going to use this to paint more leaves in between the ones that I painted earlier. You can always switch up the tones and add more of the burgundy mix or the yellow ochre as well to just play around with the tone. There are no rules for this and you can do whatever you feel like with these types of doodles and even use different color combinations if you have a go-to color mix. The next color I'm going to add is olive green. I love this olive green against the redness of the burgundy and I find that the green adds a pop of fresh color and I'm just going to distribute this again around the stem. You can also add longer stems. I like to do this to cover the circle a bit more and also just place around or even layer on the green on top of the burgundy if you feel like. Just make sure that the burgundy leaves are completely dry though if you want to layer on the colors. So those three are basically the limited colors that I'm going to use for the leaves. I like to go back to the previous colors just to balance out the composition. And I also like to go back to the burgundy mix with a thicker consistency. So there's also a play with darker values against the medium and the light. I feel like the leaves are fairly full now so I'm going to add on little circles in the background with a very light consistency of the olive green because I felt like it needs a bit of that fresher color and I'm also going to mix up a very light consistency of the burgundy with the yellow ochre and do the same by placing random circles and playing with the size. I wanted to leave white lines in the middle of the leaves and I didn't do that properly while I was painting so I just end up adding some white lines with my white jelly roll pen for some of the leaves. I'm also going to add some pen doodles here. I'm using my Sakura Micron pen. This is with the color sepia and I'm just going to doodle on top of some of the leaves while adding line details and also adding more leaves just with the pen. Just have fun with this part. I find it really relaxing just aimlessly doodling like this.
for some of the leaves i'm going to add some line details but i'm also going to leave plain ones and also play with the size Once I'm done doodling with my pen, I felt like I needed a couple of small circles with a darker value so I end up just using the olive green by itself in a slightly thicker consistency to paint those circles. Then comes my favorite part which is to add accents with my fine tech gold and I'm just going to dot random brush strokes on the composition for some metallic accents. And that's it, this is the finished look for the first doodle. Moving on to the second doodle, here are the colors that I'll be using. Crimson Lake, Jean Brilliant No. 2, Olive Green, and Sepia. I'm going to begin by creating a dusty pink color using a mix of Crimson Lake and Jean Brilliant. With this color, I'm going to create leaves which are almost heart-shaped or an upside-down heart shape. I like to place them randomly across the page and I also like to play around with the angles. You can always play with the consistency of paint as well as the ratio of the color mixtures. And while the paint is still wet, I also like to dot some olive green for that wet on wet effect for the base color. I also decided to add some Jean Brilliant and just tap it on the painted area and this way the wet area becomes a barrier so the paint won't travel more than the leaf. For the stem, I decided to add sepia into the previous pink mixture and I'm using my synthetic brush so I can get those really thin lines. But just like before, you can also switch to a smaller brush for this. At the tip or the connecting section of the stem and the leaves, I like to add more of the sepia so the sepia travels slightly on the leaves. Because I've been adding so much paint for the leaves, the paper is fairly wet and before I move on, I do need them to be completely dry so it's best to just have a hair dryer next to you if you don't want to wait too long. Once the leaves are dry, I'm going to add some pen doodles. I'm just drawing on the same leaf shapes and scatter them around the main stem by also playing with the size. Then once I've drawn out a few of them, I'm going to add thin vein lines for the detail, but you can also create different patterns for it if you have any other ideas, but I just wanted to doodle something quick and easy. And I'm just going to repeat this for all of the leaves that I've drawn out. After I finished doodling with my pen, I felt like the top of the stem needed a smaller leaf so I decided to add the same type of leaf using a mix of Jean Brilliant with olive green and I'm going to apply it the same way but use this as a base and reverse the color by adding the pink from the mixture of Jean Brilliant and Crimson Lake on top of the olive green this time. After this, I still wanted to doodle some more, so I decided to use my white jelly roll pen and draw on top of the painted leaves. Honestly though, I think it was a bit too much in the end. I really like the simpler, less crowded look with just the paint in contrast with the details of the sepia pen. But yeah, I didn't really plan this, so I just drew what I felt like at the time. And sometimes it doesn't always turn out as well as I'd like, but I still enjoy drawing the leaves. So yeah, just experiment yourself. The great thing about doodling is that it's quick and easy, and this way you can make so many different combinations and varieties and just experiment and have fun. If at any point you feel like adding more leaves with paint then go for it, if not just leave it. Same goes for the pen doodles. So for this I decided to add more leaves with just the flat colors of 
the pink and also the olive green because I'm pretty sure by then I realized how crowded it looks with all the lines and after this I decided to also add seeds or buds with a metallic pen this is a metallic jelly roll pen and the color is copper for the seeds, I simply drew dots with lines attaching those dots to the stem and that's it for the second one. So this is the finished second doodle. Again, you don't have to add on as many lines as I did for this one. And I think that that would greatly save your composition. But anyway, let's move on to the next one. So here are the colors. Firstly, I have Crimson Lake, John Brilliant, Olive Green, Cobalt Blue, and Yellow Ochre. I'm going to begin by creating two shades of green, a blue green and a yellow green. For the blue green, I mix cobalt blue with olive green, and for the yellow green, I mix yellow ochre with olive green, just so I have those two colors ready on my palette. I'm just going to start with the yellow green first. I'm using a medium consistency and a medium load on my brush to paint long leaves. And I'm alternating the position from the left and the right while imagining that there's a stem in the middle. I want a little bit of distance between the leaves because it's always easier to either extend your leaves or attach it to a stem rather than if the leaves were too close and overlapping each other. For the blue-green, I decided to add some Crimson Lake because after looking at the yellow-green, I decided that I quite like the warm tone of the green after putting it down on paper. So just to recap, this is a mix of Cobalt Blue, Olive Green, and Crimson Lake. With this color, I'm going to paint more leaves and because this is a very nice and rich color, I decided to also paint the stem with it. Again, I'm using a fairly large synthetic brush to paint the stem, but you can always switch to a smaller one if you feel like you need more control. After painting the stem, this is where you can see a bit of distance between the stem and the leaves, so I just extended the stem and this way you can see that the leaves look more delicate because there's that bit of distance where you can see very fine lines in between the thicker strokes of the leaves. I'm just adding more leaves here with a different shade of green. This time I added more cobalt blue in the previous brown mixture and this way because it still has a little bit of that crimson lake. Even with added cobalt blue, the green is still not too cold. And just like the first one, I'm going to play with the ratio and thickness of paint so I can create a nicer contrast between the lighter and the darker values. Now that the branch looks fairly lush, I'm going to add pen doodles of the same type of leaves, but this time I'm only going to add details to some of the leaves. Similar to what I did with the first doodle, I'm not going to make the same mistake as I did with the second one. Once I've added the pen doodles, I'm going to add circles using yellow ochre in thin consistency and also the dusty pink mixture of Crimson Lake and Jean Brilliant, both colors in a very thin consistency first so I can decide whether I would like to layer on more colors or not. I decided to add small dots to contrast the larger circles and then just like the first one, I'm going to create sort of like a rectangle brush stroke in a dry brush consistency so it gives a nice texture with the gold paint and after I'm done with the background, I decided to go back in to paint more leaves but this time I'm going to use a thick consistency of the same gold paint.
So this is how the third one looks. I love the color combination of this one and also the fact that this has the most gold. Let me know which one is your favorite in the comments. So that's it for today's video. Like usual, all the list of tools as well as my social media links will be in the description box. If you're still here, thank you so much for watching till the end and I'll see you at the next one. Bye!